Our next guest says the recent rally has been propped up by hopes of a rate cut, but investors shouldn't chase stocks here. Let's bring in Mark Yusko, CEO and Chief Investment Officer at Morgan Creek Capital Management. Mark, always great to speak with you. Hey, Melissa. Great to be with you. You know, we've called you the man who called the 20 percent sell off <laughs> in the fall, and, and that was right. But here we are back close to record highs. So where do yeah. you see the dangers now? Yeah, look, it's, it's almost precisely nine months since we had that conversation and, and a major draw drop a little bit saying markets could fall 40 percent. And we only got half of it. And now we're right back to near levels where we were in October, about flat for that period, actually flat all the way back to January of 2018, adjusted for inflation. So I, I look, I think we're as overvalued as we were then. I think the risks are to the downside, just what you guys were just talking about. And I think the one thing that people are really making a mistake about is they're saying that an interest rate cut is a good thing because they can use a lower discount rate, but they're not looking at the reason why the Fed would cut rates, which is that earnings and growth are going to be a disaster. So you're going to be discounting a lower number. You get a lower number. Unless you believe that the, that the next cut is going to be an insurance cut. Um, that it's that things yeah. are not a disaster right now. I mean, you're a bear, so you may think that things are, are a disaster, but there are plenty of people out there who think, you know, fundamentally things are, are all right. We are seeing some softening in the data here in the United States and softening certainly around the world, uh, yeah. but, but things aren't going off a cliff. Well, I, I don't know if you'll find anybody who will really stand up and say that earnings are going to be great and have a strong recovery. Even those that were saying we we're going to have a second half recovery are now saying, oh, maybe it'll be 2020. So I don't know that you're going to get anybody to stand up and say, hey, things are going to get awesome really quickly. I think all of the economic data has been very disappointing. GDP has been disappointing. The uh, Fed now, the Atlanta Fed uh, GDP now is down to 1.3 percent for Q2. Uh, that's way below what people were saying, 3 and 4 percent even six months ago. And I think earnings season is going to be the classic example of you take the bar off the rack, you put the bar on the ground, you jump over the bar, and then you claim you're the world high jump champion. So, Mark, what's the catalyst for this move to the downside? I mean, you can yeah. make an argument the catalyst in October, September and October was Powell being as hawkish as any Fed chair has been yeah. since, uh, you know, you go back 30 or 40 years. Is that yep. the, is the next catalyst an earnings season that disappoints and that's why we roll over? Look, I think that's, that's the really, really great point that – that what we're missing now is the catalyst. There clearly was the catalyst last fall was, was the hawkishness and Powell saying he was going to be his own man and then doing the Powell flip-flop. But I think today you were just talking about it. Deutsche Bank could be that canary in the coal mine. There are big risks on their derivative book uh, that people aren't really talking about. And look, I call it the National Bank of Germany for a reason. It's too big to fail. It will be bailed out. And the market may short term like that. But just like in the U.S. bailout in, in late 2007, remember when they banned short selling banks and they tried to save all the banks? They went down 80, 90 percent from there, from there. And they were already down 50 or 60 percent. So I think this could be the beginning of of a really tough period. And give me the upside. I mean, somebody give me an upside reason for, to get excited. Mark, it's Karen. Let me just throw out one, even though I'm somewhat bearish, a China trade deal, right? Yeah. That, that is a case for the upside. What's your thoughts on whether that happens? And if it does, what does that mean for the market? I, I, two things. One, I think the China trade deal has been priced in four times already. So I think it's uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. I think the second problem is there will be no China trade deal. I was with uh, a guy who runs the China Beige book. And uh, at a conference a couple weeks ago, we were speaking together and he said, look, two months ago, there was a deal that China would sign and Trump backed away. And he said there is no deal that the U.S. can put in front of China. That they will sign today because they're going to make them admit wrongdoing and they're just not going to do it. So I think that's going to be a big disappointment when people realize that the hope and remember, hope is not an investment strategy. It's a four letter word that the hope of a trade deal just isn't going to happen. Well, some might d disagree on the basis of a political cycle in which Trump wants to be reelected. We'll put that aside for now, Mark. Yep. We have you, yep. so we got to ask you about Bitcoin. Where do you see it going from here? Yeah. Does it reclaim it. old no, highs? Again, uh, well, I, we're definitely going to reclaim old highs. And what soon? I think people miss about Bitcoin. <laughs> or eventually. Soon or eventually. Well, look, here's the crazy thing. Over the past year, 
Bitcoin is up 70, 70%. Everybody thinks it's in this bear market. Over the past 12 months, uh, I'm sorry, actually nine months since we were together on uh, October 7th, it's up 70%. It's the best performing major asset class this year. And remember, we were also together December, I think, 13th uh, on uh, halftime, not halftime, but on, on your show in the, in the afternoon. And we talked about it, 3,100, is that the bottom? And, and uh, look, that's a long way below here. And I think we're in the next parabolic move. Uh, that will take us probably into the 30,000 level uh, before we get another little correction. And then look, there's a great path. And I just did a webinar today talking about the path to you know, 100,000 by 2021 is, is really quite easy to draw out. Hmm. All right, Mark, we're gonna leave it there. Great to speak with you, thank you. Right. Mark Yusko, Thanks. Morgan Appreciate Street it. Capital. All right, how do we trade this, Dan? I think Karen makes a good point about that thing that could turn the sentiment. If there was a comprehensive trade deal that no one's expecting, if everyone's priced it not to happen, and then you have this insurance cut or maybe one or two, then you set the stage for a market that's been hovering around 2,900 for 18 months at the top end, and that becomes support. And then you get that launch that a lot of people, I think Larry Fink was calling a melt-up or something like that. That could be the ingredients for this thing taking off from here.